in your people. That's the cause. And uplifting fallen humanity. Fallen humanity is you. Fallen humanity is woman. It doesn't mean that we're not part of humanity, but fallen humanity is woman. Because she's the key to this whole game. Understand that the European can't maintain power unless the women are maintain, maintain ignorance. And we help it with our stupid belief systems in Islam, Judaism, Christianity, the whole game. All of them have been corrupted. And we, as we were talking earlier, why are you Moorish Americans? Questionnaire. Because we're descendants of Moroccans and born in America. Well, who are those Moors, Moroccans? They're descendants direct of the ancient Moabites. Well, what do you know about Moabite society? You got the circle seven? Because the Moabite society was run off that seven. Now, everybody know what that Ankh is? That's the uterus. These are fallopian tubes. And this is the birth canal. And that's government. It's called a cistern. A cistern. And that's a geometric replica of the reproductive organs of the female. That's the matriarchal system of Moabite civilization. And when the Moabite civilization began to fall, out of the Moabite civilization came the Moorish civilization, direct descendants, however influenced by patriarchal thoughts. And so the Moabite civilization is matriarchal, woman rule. The Moorish civilization is patriarchal man rules, or the son rules. But God gave her sons who were made in her likeness the authority to rule. That's where your fez come from. Your fez is a womb. And so you got your nine cosmic months of birth. You got your 12 signs of your zodiac, which is Moorish science. And you got Solomon's shield or your dual trinity. The spiritual eye being brought down to the earth and balanced. They call it Solomon's shield or the Jewish star. That's the emblem of the Moorish nation with a crescent under it. Which means the 13 cycles of woman every 28 days, two hours, 52 minutes approximately. When the moon makes its revolution around the earth, she drops a seed. 13 times a year. And whether she produces a body or not, it is that cycle time that she's had our highest energy and can bring what we need spiritually or physically. And that's called the applied science of the number nine. Her knowing of the workings of the circle seven. Not the circle seven, knowing the workings of, of the circle seven, which is relative to the workings of her womb, or what you call divine laws of nature. And this is a divine movement. I mean, movement means activity, as opposed to passivity. And so when she becomes conscious that she herself is the law and the master, she will teach those Muslims in her womb and they will come out educated. But she must know this to do it. There's only seven days in that circle. So if they don't know the philosophy of the Zodiac, they can't use it, can they? I mean, are we, are we looking at this? 
And so if she disrespects the power over that womb, that universal, illustrious school, because some religious idiots told them that they're dirty, which is what they've been doing in both Islam, Judaism, Christian, all those corrupt institutions that we've been trying to defend and have enslaved ourselves. Are we understanding this? And so, when you see that eye on that pyramid, how about taking it like this? Right? And take a look at your turban. And your button. You must understand what's being told to you. Now that is the seat of David. That's the throne of David. Or the throne of Daoud. And the throne of Daoud is the activation of the pineal gland, which is a spiritual gland. It is. That's why they will tell you they don't know what it was for. Pineal gland, yes. Okay. And what else? What two major spiritual glands that are in the body? Pineal gland and pituitary. What do they do? So let's look at this nine. Let's take this eye of this nine, right? Eighteen is the dual trine. This is the eighteen. How much is this? One on twenty, isn't it? One twenty, isn't it? One twenty, isn't it? Isn't it? One twenty. See it? One twenty. 120. What is it? It's the three by three. Three angles and three planes. Equilateral, equilateral pr uh, pyramid or triangle or geometry. And so you often see in there also a G and you also see a seven. That's also circle seven, but you must know what you're looking at. So a lot of symbols that others have stolen from us is really Moorish culture. Don't reject things, because you're going to have to collect it back. Because part of our problems is that we've denied who we are and are busy trying to be somebody else. So now we must be, recognize that we must learn spiritually to start working these symbols and these glyphs that are part of our culture and not just recognize them and say, oh yeah, that's relative to the Moors. Because guess what? In the real world, you're going to be challenged on its meaning. Because a lack of knowledge of its meaning means somebody can rob you. So if you're going to know the truth about your nationality and birthright, you better know what it is because guess what? You've been enslaved. And it's the lack of knowledge that has been allowing them to sustain or maintain your enslavement and to license your rights as privileges, i.e. licenses again. Are, we, are you following me? So that's what that 18 is. And the 1 and 8 is also 9 again. And so I suggest to you again, look at your questionnaire and count those drops of water that's dropping off that sister's body. But again, if the prophet came here and told you that that woman is a lie, you reject it. But if you study, you would recognize it because you discovered it for yourself. Then when you discover it for yourself, you won't reject it. And so what else occurs when you begin to do research in ancient civilization? What do you discover about the so-called gods in the ancient civilizations? The floor is open. 
They're all feminine. All of them. And even the feminine names are sustained to this day. It's just that people think they're masculine names. Because they've been Christianized. And so they follow the popes of Rome and then using the, the, uh, the uh, Christian dogma and